G'day, everyone. Great to have you with us again on the NTFA Footy Show. Of course, with thanks to DLM Machinery. Plenty to get through tonight. A little bit later on, we will check out and preview what's coming up in the men's Premier and Division 1 competitions, as well as some other events coming up very soon in football around Tasmania. Abby Green will join us once again for our women's segment with thanks to Clean Away. We'll dissect last week's incredible finish to the senior women's match against the SFL down at North Hobart Oval. And Aaron Roberts, regional manager for AFL Tasmania, will be along to give us some very interesting facts and figures of the trends from junior football coming through to senior level here with footy in Tasmania. It'll be a great chat with him and also a special guest joining him as well. So plenty to get through. But as we do every week, we're going to start off with our Footy photo of the week, of course, with thanks to the team up at Little Rivers Brewing Company. And the winner this week, check out this photo. It's a pretty impressive one. They're not just six blokes there. They're actually three sets of identical twins from the St. Pat's Football Club. Thank you to Nigel Meek who has sent in the photo there. All life members and current players amongst these as well. So we've got Stu and uh, Marty Boyd on the left there. And they played in the 2000s, both life members. Tom and Dan Everett, both 200 gamers for the club and life members and current players as well. And we've also got Aidan and Tristan Collins. They are the ones on the left. And we've got Tom and Dan in the middle, Stu and Marty Boyd there on the right. So uh, how about that? You wouldn't have that too often. Three sets of identical twins at the one footy club. So well done. And thanks to Nigel Meek. Wins a four pack of crafty cuts with thanks to Little Rivers. And as always, your favorite footy photo coming up over the weekend. Please send it in to us and you might get it put up there on our show when we come to you next time. All right, time for a quick break. We'll be back very shortly with our clubs in focus. Durable, reliable, heavy duty. Get the power you need from the people who know machinery. For sales, parts, servicing and expert advice, call DLM Machinery today or visit dlmmachinery.com.au. Welcome back to the NTFA footy segment. Time for our Club in Focus. A little bit different this week with thanks, of course, to Harrison Agents. Got two guests here to my left. And we want to have a little bit of a chat today about one club in particular for our first guest who uh, is with the old Scotch Collegians Football Club, but also get a bit of an idea on participation rates and how things are trending in football, particularly on the back of the AFL news with Tasmania set to join in a few years' time. So being joined by the regional manager, AFL Tasmania here in the north in uh, Aaron Roberts, and also a young lady who is heading to the mainland this weekend she is part of an All-Stars team that will be playing at Marvel Stadium in Tunisia, Kikawak. Welcome, guys. Good to have you with us. Great Thank to be you. here. Uh, we'll yeah. get on to your selection very shortly. But, Aaron, um, obviously exciting news over the, the last uh, five weeks or so, of course, with the AFL announcement. But obviously a bit to play out still with the stadium. Yep. But I guess it's it's a really opportune time to to find out and see, you know, where is our participation rates in, in footy, I guess, particularly as we look to, um, with I guess, the, the stepping stones that are now available for our young men and women yeah, in sure. terms of uh, being able to stay here. Yeah, look, more broadly, our participation rates are, are pretty good. Like, we, we, we've been stable for about five or six years. The challenge for us is how many games people play. So at the moment, the average games, a junior might play is about seven per year, and for an adult, it's about five. So that puts a strain on a club. So they need more players now than they may have done, say, 15, 20 years ago. But mm. generally, the, the rates have been pretty good, and we're just holding steady. We're obviously trying to lift those in the next few years. And where are some of the threats, I guess, in, in sport as well? I mean, obviously, we hear a lot and see a lot with, with basketball yep. and, and, and soccer. But um, I guess from threats, where, where do the opportunities come from? Well, our opportunities are females. So at the moment, we want to increase our females up to equal on par with our adult males as well. So our growth is in the, the really young age. And Tanisha's helping us out with our, our, as a female ambassador in our AFL mm. space. So that sort of age five to age nine is a real growth opportunity. We also think we need some better products to engage maybe migrants or people that haven't played for, say, a decade. So okay. there's some new ideas, new products out there. We can come for six, seven weeks, paid user, provider, come to a ground and just participate. And we think that's important as well. Mm. The 16-week roster is a long time to play for a new participant or someone who hasn't played for a while. So that's an opportunity down the track as well to provide some better products. Mm. But overall, the growth scene definitely in females. Sustain our, our youth boys. 
eventually we need to increase the whole base. Hmm. Um, our second slide we'll bring up here as well. I'll get you to talk us through this one and um, more around, I guess, where uh, our membership was was last year. And yep. I think this is really good for people around Tasmania to actually see some some cardhold facts. Yeah, look, our, our numbers have sort of stayed about 14 and a half for about four years now. They sort of peaked at 19. To be honest, anything prior to sort of 15, the numbers were calculated on a spreadsheet. Um, mm. They aren't accurate. These are really accurate numbers. Um, there's a lot of duplicate numbers and most sports were um, doing all sorts of wiggle room work to make sure they got funding. Our numbers are pretty good, about 14 and a half, which puts us about level with, say, yep. Football Federation TAS um, okay. and, and fairly advanced to some of the other sports. The Auskick stuff's where we can grow. So that's our junior product from, say, five to seven-year-olds. And Tanisha's going to help support some yep. of that work and already has. And that's our real opportunity mm. to grow that up to five or six thousands over the next few years. Yeah. Um, Tanisha, I'm interested to find out how you got involved in football. What, what drew you to the game? The support. North Lonnie, I've been with them as a junior club and they've just been incredible. I've had mm. such support from them. They've been so welcoming, especially just moving down from the mainland. Mm. They've just been so welcoming and so just family, really. And I guess now with with your age and, gr and growing up, you're obviously part of the, um, and vice captain of the Coats League's uh, Devils team who are going really well. I mean, our, I guess the other thing as well to both of you is, is our girls and, and boys teams are, are going so well, sixth in the girls and on top of the ladder in the boys. And that's probably shows a little bit about the future of um, where we could be headed. Is that something with the AFL announcement um, gives you the opportunity to, to not have to move again, I guess, and be be here in Tasmania if that's something that you want to strive towards with a AFLW? Yeah, I definitely would love to come back home and play for such a great state, but I think we're a little bit far away from that, but hopefully be able to get involved in that as soon as possible. Uh, tell us about this weekend because uh, you've got a big day coming up on Sunday at Marvel Stadium. Um, this game is going to be the curtain raiser to North Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs, and you're going to be playing for the All-Stars against the uh, the All-Australians. Now, tell us about this All-Stars team. How has that been selected and what's the purpose of it? So the purpose is basically to highlight anyone who's eligible for the draft this year. So the team that I'm playing on, the All-Stars, All sorry, um, it's a team that has been selected by the AFLW teams to pick or just identify more talent who can hopefully allow them to be drafted. So you're on the radar. Okay, so the sounds of it. <laughs> it is a big weekend, but I guess down here as well, here in, in Tassie, you're uh, part of the Old Scotch, and the Premier Division women's competition is uh, pretty tight. There's uh, three yeah. or four clubs in there that have got Bridge North on top of it, yeah. who haven't lost a game yet, but then yourselves, Old Launcestonians, and, and the reigning Premiers in Launceston yeah. are obviously beginning to improve as well. So tell us about that competition, and are you, are you seeing that it's growing every year? Because we saw... Yeah the NTFAW team, which we'll talk out about a little bit later in the show. Um, so, so close last week against the South. I know it's been so tight and the development from juniors to women's has been incredible. As Aaron said, keeps growing, keeps developing and just hope for the numbers mm. to eventually get there and we can just all play everyone and get big numbers, I guess. And you said obviously through the junior pathway with North Launceston, how, how great they were to you and, and, and your family. And now you're obviously playing with Old Scotch. Tell us a little bit about the Old Scotch Football Club and uh, down there at the uh, NTCA Cricket yeah. Ground. Um, have you enjoyed that transition now going from, from North and, and now being in the NTFAW? I think it's been easy. Like, I feel like everyone's so welcoming and so opening. Like, they embrace everything. They support you. They try and encourage you to get the games. That coaches are amazing. Both the teams, all the teams are just incredible. Mm. Um, Aaron, you would see this firsthand, obviously, in your role with, with AFL Tasmania, but the pathway now from NTJFA through to NTFA and, and the way it's going to move forward, obviously, with, with regional leagues and academies um, must be pretty exciting to see that uh, all these plans and, and hopes and wishes and dreams of Tasmania being part of the, the AFL. It's more than just the AFL now, isn't it? Because we'll look at VFLW yep. and, and for the men as well. But are you seeing um, some a lot of excitement in the communities now that there is, uh, particularly for those who have got um, the desire to strive to be the highest level, that it's given them that extra step, to, so to speak, that they can stay here? Yeah, look, I mean, Tasmania's population spread. It's like no other state. So we want someone from Smithton or someone from, you know, Tasman Peninsula to get 
on the radar. We need to have regional footy strong. Mm. We need to have, have our academies in each region too. So that's worked. So the Coach League academies in each region's worked. It's found the right kids, nurtured them, and got them ready to play. So mm. I think think it'll streamline and much more effectively. And I think, you know, if you're in a small town, you can yep. state your club. That's the big thing. Mm. Just finally, um, Aaron, question for you, because we, we had... Um, 1990 State of Origin winning coach for Tassie, Robert Shaw, uh, on the program. Of course, that historic day when Tassie beat Victoria. And he actually touched on the fact that you could have a kid from Smithton whose family can't take him five hours to Hobart to train, who would otherwise give the sport away. Do you see the numbers that we're looking at, the trends there from, from 2022? Um, do you expect our numbers to really start to increase as yeah, we look, hopefully retain. Actually, retained. interesting. Circle has got the highest participation rate nearly in Australia for football. Really, AFL. It's it's quite extraordinary. It, the, the penetration rate. Maybe it's only milking a cow and surfing at War and Marawara. I'm not 100 percent sure, but <laughs> metro areas is where we've got our numbers okay. up. It's actually Hobart and Lonnie where we've got to lift our numbers and the new sort of um, mm. outlying satellite areas. So actually, community footy in the regional areas is is thriving pretty well. Our numbers are quite strong. Mm. Um, I guess as well that there's a there's a real opportunity for uh, for the sport and I guess AFL Tasmania competing against so many other sporting organisations. But the the academies that we'll find in the regions, um, any clearer sort of picture on how that's going to be set up, where they will be, particularly down the northwest coast, I guess as well, where um, it's a very strong football community. Yeah, I mean we've got we're going to have some investment at Dial Park, so it's going to get further investment. Mm. Obviously here we've obviously got Utah Stadium is potentially a really strong location for a good academy. Yep. So we've got good facilities. We've got partly staff involved, so that'll just get bumped. Mm. The staffing, credibility, and, and that support for the talent team, which currently exists, will be just umped. I think we've got a pretty good structure with the Coast League. We just lift it all. Fantastic. Well, look, great to go through those numbers and see where it's trending because you hear a lot of negatives sometimes about um, you, clubs that have gone and, and competitions over the last decade or so that have gone, but strong numbers still, and we should really only be seeing those go up, I would imagine, uh, with the exciting news as we get a bit closer to our, our own team for uh, for men and women. So, Aaron, yep. thanks for coming Thank in. You. All the best on uh, Sunday. Uh, for those who want to catch it, it is being live streamed. And the game starts at, uh, I've no idea, I've lost my notes on 1.45, that. 1.45, I think, 145, isn't it? 1.45, yeah. there we go. So <laughs> 1.45, it's a curtain raiser to uh, the twilight game between North Melbourne and the Dogs. So uh, we wish you well. I hope you stand Thank out you. for uh, all those talent scouts. <laughs> Hopefully. Good to have you on the show. Thank all the best. Great. Thanks, Thanks Aaron. All right, that is uh, our Harrison segment for this week. We'll be back in a moment as we focus on women's footy and in particular the rep series. Durable, reliable, heavy duty. Get the power you need from the people who know machinery. For sales, parts, servicing and expert advice, call DLM Machinery today or visit dlmmachinery.com.au. the NTFA was freestone, unable to get it cleanly. The SFL have it. The SFL have it now as they try to move the ball forward. Thomas absorbs the tackle. A ferocious tackle from Liana Freestone. The NTFA earned the free kick. They have it on the wing. There's 45 seconds left. One kick the difference. Kick goes inside 50. Archer scraps away. Gets the kick out wide in the direction of Ransom. Ransom has the ball tied up against the line. Out of bounds. The NTFA will bring the ball back into play. 30 seconds left. One kick, the difference. The ball goes inside 50 from Freestone. Mark not taken. Archer, back of the pack, tries to kick it. It's a big ball to win. Robinson gets the football, shrugs one tackle, has a shot on goal. Alice Robinson misses the lot. 10 seconds to go. Anthony is completely out of his seat right now. We are, everyone is up out of their seats watching this last second unfold. Two seconds left. The SFL have done it. The siren sounds. And the Southern football. Oh, Abby Green, you've watched that back about 20 times and you still rode that final kick by Alice, didn't you? Um, how do you summarise that? I mean, it was a, it was a it was a great game. It was. Uh, look, every time I watch it, I just assume 
gets my heart racing. I yeah. think it's going through and it just, yeah, misses on that final shot. It was so unfortunate, but you have to credit the girls for that fight back after yep. the first quarter. Yeah, exactly. And and obviously three quarter time in a winning position and they had a, a they just went bang, bang, bang. Mm. But the fact that the, the team was resilient and, and fought back strongly, but it was a great quality game. And I guess um, it, it, it shows as well how far women's football continues to come and evolve because it was a high quality game and we're seeing some of the highlights here and I think this might be Alice Robinson um, just about to kick uh, the NTFA's opening goal in, in the first quarter. But talk about her. She had a great game as well. Her, her strength and we saw that in, in the final minute 30 seconds of the game as well she just uh, ran all day yeah she's got a bit of x factor little alice um she performs extremely well on the on the wing um and that's because she's got so much speed and she's mm. very versatile um there was a goal assist that she had later down the track where she kicked it from almost the back half of the ground ran through to the forward half and then gave a nice forward entry um so it was really good to see and the fitness level as well um, can't be questioned because you guys ran all day mm -hmm. and credit to the SFL. Obviously, they had a big win against the NWFL a couple of days earlier. So they had to back up on uh, from Saturday to Monday as well. But uh, right on cue, here, here you are, Abby Green. Look at that nice mark. Play on. Bang. Goal. Look, thanks to Alice. But um, no, I, I knew that there was an open goal square behind yeah. me um, as I was the deepest forward. So I was trying to pile on as many goals as possible. Yeah. And what was the feeling after the game? Because uh, you've obviously got a game we'll get to shortly that you've got mm. to prepare for for this weekend. But what was the message from uh, from the coach, Ash Smith? How was, uh, how was he towards the group? Was he disappointed, proud, both? Yeah, it was a mixed emotion. Look, it was very quiet in the rooms afterwards. Um, obviously, we were very disheartened we came so close and um just to lose in those final moments not knowing if alice's mm. goal was going to go through or not but his message was like obviously you had to be proud of where we've come from last year mm. um there was a massive growth in the way the team connected um but yeah it was just a bit of a bit of sadness yeah. a bit of disappointment because we were so close but back to the drawing board and next mm. week uh this weekend sorry hopefully get a win big opportunity absolutely um, so we might just have a quick look at the mvp votes for this game because there is an award and obviously the series wraps up this weekend but we can see here from uh, the ntfa perspective um, congratulations to chelsea thomas of the uh, sfl who picked up the five votes there but Deanne taylor of course from scottsdale picking up four votes and play we've spoken about a couple of times uh, Alice Robinson with three and and OL's teammate of course Jen Guy with a with a couple of votes and Kelsey Hill and, and Emily McKinnell also picking up one so you lose Jen Guy this weekend so she's obviously yep. got um uh, commitments yeah she's off to the VFL yeah, um, yeah games are minimal over there so it's a good opportunity to it her is. to keep performing exciting for her and obviously an opportunity for someone else to uh and that's to it. perform on the big stage so absolutely this weekend uh saturday it'll be and this is a massive day coming up at Invermay park it's at 12 45 you take on the nwfl yep but it's also ntfa division one game as well between old Launcestonians and st pats in the men so it's going to be mm. a, a very big day uh Tell us about the approach this weekend, because, I mean, obviously you never take a game lightly, but the SFL defeated the NWFL pretty convincingly, but they're a very strong unit. They've mm -hmm. got good history against mm -hmm. the NTFA. So yep. how have you approached this week? Well, we understand that they're extremely fast. Mm. We can't really take into consideration their game against the South. It was extremely wet. Although there may be a bit of rain this week, it could give us the upper hand. Uh, we know we've got to stop them in our tracks. Um, minimize their run and carry with the ball but as ash smith um, mentioned he's been fantastic in the build up to this he said we're not going to get any better as players we're not going to get any fitter it's about coming together as a team and that's what we're doing um, so credit to the girls if we can continue that unitedness we're going to have a strong performance on the weekend and chase that first ever win for the north that will be uh, something else because yeah as you mentioned um the ntfaw rep mm. team have never won a game never so uh, there could be some big celebrations coming it up this, uh, this Saturday afternoon 
hopefully for them as well. Um, I do want to just congratulate uh, our under twenties because um, obviously they were were beaten last week, yeah. um, pretty convincingly by the mm-hmm. SFL. A very very strong team there. But um, congratulations to the girls because they're obviously not playing this weekend because yep. the NWFL don't have that um, underage side. So, uh, but well done to them. I'm sure they'll be there to uh, support because yep. there is no NTFA women's football again this week because obviously of the uh, the rep series. But we will uh, catch up a bit later in the show on everything happening in the men's. But Abby, um, you pulled up well, have you? You kicked three goals and you're feeling good? Oh, I'm ready to go. Take that hunger out into next weekend. This weekend, sorry. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, we wish uh, Ash and uh, all the players the very best. Thanks for coming in. Good luck. We look forward to catching a, a great game and hopefully a big celebration afterwards. Thanks, Rick. Abby Green joining us here on our women's segment with thanks to Clean Away. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in the men's footy in the Premier Division and Division 1 and another footy news around the state as well. Durable, reliable, heavy duty. Get the power you need from the people who know machinery. For sales, parts, servicing and expert advice, call DLM Machinery today or visit dlmmachinery.com.au. And welcome back to the NTFA Footy Show and now with thanks to Crafty Cuts. We've got footy back on this weekend after the long weekend break, so we're going to take a look at what's coming up in men's footy. And firstly, we'll turn our attention to the men's premier division. We are at the halfway mark of the season. It is round nine coming up and all the matches this Saturday afternoon. And as we can see, Hillwood sitting on top of the ladder, undefeated six wins and, of course, that draw in the final game they played before the break against reigning premiers Longford. They are at home at Shark Park. They take on Scottsdale at 2 o'clock this Saturday. The Magpies with uh, just the one win for the season so far. Big challenge for them as they head to Hillwood. Then up at the Youngtown Oval. The next two games, really, really important games because only one win is separating these four teams plus percentage. So fourth to seventh, just one win plus percentage. So massive couple of games as South Launceston take on Deloraine. It's fourth versus seventh. And then down at Parrot Park, Bridge North uh, taking on Bracknell, looking to get back on the winner's list. Fifth versus sixth, that game also at Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. And Georgetown are playing Longford. That is down at Blue Gum Park. And of course, the Saints, big ask for them against the reigning premiers, Longford. And uh, that should be, well, big challenge for Georgetown. But uh, we wish them well against the uh, might of the Longford Football Club. So that is the Premier Division men's competitions. Let's turn our attention now to Division 1. Some great games coming up here. And uh, down at St Helens, it is an important game. Seventh versus sixth, the East Coast Swans are taking on Evandale. And that game at 2 p.m., both on three wins and four losses so far for the season. And we have Old Lots Estonians taking on St. Pat's. So this game, the senior game, uh, it is actually going to be at 2.30, not 2 o'clock as stated on that slide. Uh, this will be after the game between, of course, the rep match between the NTFAW and NWFLW. So 2.30 p.m. Uh, important game, this one as well. Old Lots Estonians starting to show some form. They've won their past three and taking on the reigning premiers. Out at Lilydale. They take on the University of Tasmania. A big challenge there, that one for uni. Also, uh, Perth, well, they need to get back on the winner's list after a great start to the season. They did win their first six, uh, but they have lost their past two matches. Tough assignment this week uh, against the uh, undefeated Old Scotch, that one there for uh, Perth, so that is going to be a very important game. And Bridport, well, they're looking for three in a row, and they take on the Meander Valley Suns at uh, beautiful Bridport on Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. So that is what we've got coming up in NTFA men's action this weekend. No women's matches, of course, because of the rep game on Saturday afternoon. All right, let's have a look at what else is coming up in the not too distant future around Tasmania. And just a reminder on this, the 1990 Tasmanian State of Origin Team Reunion. Now, this is going to be a fantastic event. Make sure you get your tickets for this because they are strictly very limited numbers. It is on Friday, the 6th of October. It is happening down at the Glenorchy Football Club at KG5. Guest speakers are going to include the Tasmanian State of Origin coach of that year, Robert Shaw, and their captain, 
Darren Pritchard, of course, Hawthorne great and former Sandy Bay player. And Victorian coach David Parkin will also be there and skipper Gary Ayres. They'll be the guest speakers on the night, plus uh, just about the entire Tasmanian team as well. Uh, that is $100 only for, and booking fee, and that includes a buffet meal and drinks package. And the Relive the Rivalry game is actually going to be the next day. So, uh, mate, that is at North Hobart Oval. So make sure you check that out. Get on the Relive the Rivalry Facebook page for all of the details. Now, up the northwest coast, of course, this relates to the Smithton Football Club, now back in the NWFL as the Circular Head Saints. Two incredible teams here, the 1983 and 1991 Premiership teams for Smithton. They're having a reunion on Saturday, the 22nd of July at the Smithton Recreation Centre. Now, if you want to book, you can check out all the details on the Facebook page or you can email circularheadsaints at gmail.com. Also got the phone numbers there for Keith and Kelly at uh, the Circular Head Saints Football Club where you can get some more information as well. Uh, Old Lons Estonians, well, they've got a big day coming up this weekend. Also, it is the Past Players Day. This is happening at Invermay Park uh, this Saturday, the 17th of June. $50 includes food and drinks. Uh, check out the Old Lons Estonians Facebook page to book your tickets or email Old Lons Estonians as well at Old Lons Estonians FC at gmail.com. Huge day, as we said, it is going to be a big Division One game with Old Lons Estonians taking on the reigning Premier St. Pat's at 2.30 p.m. And uh, you're going to get more bang for buck on that day as well because we've got the rep game between the NTFAW and NWFL as well. A couple of more to get through. Uh, coming up the following week on Saturday, the 24th of June, up at the Youngtown Oval from 1.30 p.m. It's Ladies' Day at the South Launceston Footy Club. Always a great day every year. It's only 40 bucks per person, and that'll get underway at 1.30 p.m. Big game of men's footy as well. South Launceston uh, sitting nicely in the five at the moment in fourth position. They take on second place in form at Roche Lee. Uh, details are on the club Facebook page and you'll be able to uh, have a great day out for all the ladies there at uh, Youngtown Oval on the 24th of June. So uh, make sure you check out that one. Now, we need more umpires in the NTFA. Now, if you would like to inquire about how you could take it up, earn a few extra bucks, you might be a retired player, someone young, and someone with a bit of spare time you'd like to get involved, check out this little video we got for you now. Umpires are so important to our game, and we need more. Find out about the many benefits involving umpiring at play.afl forward slash umpire. So there you go, become an umpire today, and if you want to check out some more information, you can... Uh, Head to the NTFA Facebook page. We've got that as well. And AFL Tasmania. Get in touch with your local umpires association. Uh, just a reminder, once again, uh, if you're looking for something to do on the weekend and you're up here in the north, get behind our women. They're looking for their first ever win in rep football. They take on the NWFL and that is at Invermay Park. 12.45 p.m. will be the first bounce. All games, if you can't get there, the game will be live streamed on the AFL Tasmania YouTube page. So we wish them well. Well, that is all we got for tonight on the NTFA Footy Show. Of course, thanks to David and Leanne Morrison and the team from DLM Machinery. Enjoy your footy weekend, and we look forward to catching you next time on the NTFA Footy Show.